Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Sketch Book Podcast. I am Cash, and we're gonna do something today. What are we gonna do? What 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 is up today? Oh yeah, we're gonna be discussing about hundred days of sketching, the lessons. Maybe not too many. I just have one lesson from this entire challenge, which we did. One lesson and a couple of plans and a couple of things that you can do after you know having completed hundred days of sketching challenge. So let's. Just stop the rambling and get into the podcast, shall we? Okie dokie. So before we start, you know, this podcast, I would highly recommend that you pick up a sketchbook, your drawing thingies and tools, and just listen to me while you talk, so that you can get. something done you know in a productive way get it done and get it over with you know like i also by the way i like drawn talks and i like these podcast listening sessions where i draw stuff so yeah i love these things so you you might want to try this thing if you're sort of want that right so yeah so that is the deal before that i just want to sort of share something that I've been working on right before we get into the topic of this podcast. I just want to talk a little bit about Drawing Camp. Drawing Camp, yeah, Drawing Camp is sponsoring this podcast. People, those guys over at Drawing Camp, they're awesome. So, why? What, what is Drawing Camp? Well, Drawing Camp is a program for you to level up your art in just twenty minutes a day. It's like a workout program. Like you know, you play one of those workout DVDs and you follow along, right? So, Drawing Camp is like that. You just Press play, follow along, get that thing done, and you're over with. So we and and the the part about this camp is like it's a 14 part program. It's like a new course comes out every month, and the first co- for for the first course, <laughs> begin drawing is free. Of course, you can go and try that out and see for yourself. Five thousand people have joined drawing camp, so that is awesome. I'm happy that five thousand people, and it's been only two weeks since we since launched. 5000 is not a bad number <laughs> that's a lot of people so and uh, i've been hearing some great reviews about it so yeah it's 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 a, it's a good program you you should probably go check that out and uh, yeah that's i, I don't want to talk too much about the folks at drawing camp i think they're they're awesome though i've heard there are some really good people <laughs> so anyways to get into the podcast so yeah 100 days of sketching it got over on august uh, 8th yeah august 8th it got over 100 days of drawing every single day for a minimum of just 6 minutes or more obviously me being the guy who created the challenge i had the responsibility of drawing more than just 6 minutes because i don't want to look like a you know crappy poo poo in front of everybody <laughs> that won't look nice so what i did was uh, i did spend a lot of time on most of the days to you know to make a good drawing so that people who are sort of following the challenge they'll find it a bit interesting to sort of follow right that is that was the idea and there were days of course uh, where i just drew things for 6 minutes and posted that to show people that it is okay to post bad work on to social media and you will not be judged maybe you will be judged i don't care It's, the point is you don't care about being judged so yeah i, I totally did that to prove that point just kidding actually i didn't have time on a particular day and uh, on those days i just did something really quick and just posted it online so that's what i did i i, I didn't <laughs> post it to sort of prove people how it's okay to post bad art online that is not the thing maybe that could have been the thing that is there's a it's a small uh, part of it that's part of a reason but but it's not the whole reason why i did that so one thing which i've learned uh, as part of this whole thing right the camp uh, is that man i did create some good pieces here and there that was really nice right so my theory is this be a dart thrower meaning you keep throwing darts at the dartboard you just keep throwing a lot of darts at the dartboard and it's highly likely that a couple of them will stick right if you throw 1000 darts you know at least probably you'll have like say 50 to 100 darts sticking right so that is my plan so that is that is the thing that is one thing i have another lesson which completely contradicts this theory which is also that i want to sort of share today uh so that is one i'll talk about that though so 
during this 100 days we drew i drew 100 drawings and out of those uh, 100 drawings man a couple of them were really good like i was really proud of them and there were days which i where i didn't even expect to make a good drawing and i made a good drawing so it was like really nice you know uh there are there are these couple of pieces which i, I think i should probably do like a group post of me sharing some of my favorite pieces from 100 days so yeah so that is that is one big lesson but i want to share this bigger lesson which i think is probably one of the the most important things that i've sort of taken away from this challenge and every single time i do this challenge is sort of constantly shaping me and morphing me into a better person who actually lives in the real world in instead of the fantasy world in his head because i'm i'm a dreamer right i'm 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 your typical dreaming guy who's always in his head thinking about all the things that he wants to do right who doesn't right who doesn't but the thing is right as you grow up you sort of come to realize that you know life is in a fantasy it is not a fantasy it's better than that it's real it's not a fantasy it's not as fun as fantasy the, the part about fantasy fantasy is like instagram you just see the highlights of things right you just see the good stuff but you don't see the behind the scenes stuff that happens in the real world and uh, that is that is the sort of thing right so this challenge sort of every single time i do this this is the third time i'm doing this challenge it sort of grounds me and actually shows me what it means to start something what it means to finish something what it means to go through the process of doing something that is worthwhile you know it's sort of building character which is so 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 good it feels like this challenge is probably like the savior of my own life i mean i'm i'm just talk i'm just talking about it myself i'm not i'm not i'm not saying it should be like or it is for someone else the thing is 100 days is quite a long commitment at least maybe it's not long say maybe the the the, the term long has been redefined over centuries right like a couple of years back a 10 minute video on youtube <laughs> would be you know uh, considered long but these days a 5 6 minute video on youtube is considered long and heck we're in a world where 15 second tiktoks and 4 second 4 second or 6 second wines exist thank god wine died but <laughs> tiktok right like 15 seconds and man they they banned that thing too so but but to feel bad for the creators like genuinely man so many people were on that platform it's, it's not a good thing to ban stuff like this but yeah anyways i i'm not going to get into those such topics i don't have any opinions on it anyways so the term long has been defined so 100 days is sort of like a long time for me 3 months meaning 3 months of my life and it's like it's pretty long in my opinion and for me to sort of commit to something for that long and go through the process of it which involves a lot of feelings meaning you go through a lot of feelings you feel high you feel low you feel bored you feel depressed you feel sad you feel happy you feel excited enthusiastic right hopeful misery misery right all these feelings you go through that over a long period of time and uh, this challenge sort of tells me that that is how things are going to be if you're doing some sort of a project that is worthwhile it is going to be like that you're going to go through a lot of these feelings and ups and downs and you need to sort of you know buckle the hell up and just go through those things right so that is what i've been sort of thinking about meaning i've had troubles right in the past with finishing projects you know finishing the things that i've sort of started and and i usually start something you know it goes on well for a while then i sort of stop because i'm bored or something new came up something shiny came up and i want to sort of finish that thing and and this challenge on the contrary sort of it forces me to sit down and actually go through it and actually go through all the feelings that i need to sort of go through if i ever want to finish a project in my life and makes me finish that right so that was sort of like the biggest learning lesson from this thing which is there is going to be so many ups and downs through all the projects that you do and there is never going to be a consistent high meaning it's it's not going to be like everything that you do is going to be so good everything sometimes you know 
you expect it to be good right you expect everything you create to be so good but the reality of life is or reality of the thing that we do is it's 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 not like that and it me as a person who's sort of growing up right like hey i used to be a kid now i'm grown up right me being a person who's sort of growing up this sort of i'm getting rid of this mentality of everything needs to be so perfect and so on top and so on point i'm not saying i'm 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 i've completely gotten rid of that definitely not see there are there are things that i completely suck at meaning say my my other areas of my life like my exercise thing is i constantly jump from one program to another program to another program to another program without ever finishing anything which is absolutely ridiculously irritating but i do that right so yeah so this this challenge is sort of had sort of had me f- it forced me to sit down and do it and while me me doing that it's also teaching me how to go over actually doing something oh you don't just take up everything on day 1 and try to finish everything on day 1 and you just crash and burn on day 2 it doesn't work like that you need to take a little step then a little more step then a bit more then a bit more then a bit more you uh, like consistently and improve a bit by bit by bit by bit throughout the timeline of your project and there will be days where you won't be able to even you know do the uh, the minimum on those days you just forget everything else and just show up do the best that you can do and just move on it's very hard to sort of say this or articulate this in words but i don't think most people will understand what i'm trying to say unless i unless they are actually gone through a project or something like this that is this long uh you know they won't get it you, you won't get it unless you've sort of gone through it and this challenge gives you that vehicle to sort of do that and also another thing is i keep asking myself this dumb question every single year after i finish 100 days of sketching is why don't i apply this lesson to other areas of my life because it's perfect it's so good it it works right how many how many things work like most things doesn't work right so how many things work and and this thing works so well this thing works really really well and why why don't you apply this to other areas of my life i i i really don't get it man see this is why the human being this the human thing here is very complex you know we know something is good we know we're supposed to do it we know it's good for us yet we don't do it like really <laughs> we're stupid people aren't we <laughs> right so yeah so that is like sort of like the big lesson from 100 days sketching if you have a lesson right if you have something that you really think that you've learned maybe drop a comment down below and you know maybe share your lessons right share what you've learned through this challenge if you've finished it if you're going through it or if you've sort of went through you know like say day, till day 70 or 80 or 60 or 50 and you stop doing it you know maybe articulate and see what worked what didn't work what should you probably change right man these are all so simple isn't it yet yet i don't do it why don't i do it yeah so that that's another thing which i was also uh, sort of thinking right which is uh, 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 why do i have so much ego in terms of me doing the simplest of things that actually brings the result and why do i always keep aiming for this esoteric large thing which will be hard for me to s- sustain in the long run right why can't i do something that is simple that i can actually sustain right so these are all sort of the things that have sort of made me think during this thing and uh, yeah man yeah uh, this year's 100 days of sketching was definitely life changing life uh, may may maybe maybe i don't know it made me think a lot it made me think a lot about a lot of things and it has taught me so next year i'm definitely going to be doing sort of like a project of sorts instead of just drawing a uh, doing random drawings which uh, which i don't think is sort of working out well for me meaning doing random drawings every single day it was hard it was this year was sort of hard to sort of come up with a new drawing every single day rather next year i'm just going to sort of post every day for 100 days and work on a one single project 
and i think that is a better way and i think that would be sort of a better uh better way what, what, what how do i put this i think at the end of it i'll have something that i have finished and it's a better approach and would be a better demonstration of what the challenge can actually do for your projects you know it will help people right i might even sort of you know you know what to show people that this challenge is not just a sketching or a drawing challenge this can be actually used to more things other than just sketching and drawing next year i think i'm going to just work with people who want to write a book or work with who people who want to sort of make a short film or uh, people who have other sort of projects other than drawing and sketching and apply the principles of 100 days of sketching to that to show that you know what you can actually use this challenge for other things as well that's a good idea i think i should probably note that down because i'll probably forget it by the next year <laughs> and uh, yeah so that is that is number one thing so so two let's let's get to say what can you do after this challenge right what can you do what am i going to do what is what are my plans for you know after 100 days of sketching so this is going to be like a mix of a personal thingy or at the same time you can actually sort of take away some valid points i have like four things that you can do four things so So the first thing that you can do and the first thing that I am sort of doing is keep up the challenge it's very simple right the first one is very simple which is keep up the challenge keep drawing stuff it doesn't have to be like every single day this is what I've sort of talked about in a video I made called you don't have to draw every day what I meant there is it's good to draw every day but you don't have to right it's good to draw most days which is fine right that's why i i put myself through these periods where i draw every single day to build that character and that discipline and i put myself through say uh, uh, other periods right these periods which is after the 100 days of sketching challenge which i sort of let myself loose and i draw when i can that is what i'm doing and funnily enough right i'm i'm drawing most days right that is what matters more is better it doesn't have to be every single day more drawing is better so here's something you can do just draw here and there as much as you can as much as you want to and have fun and also follow the two-day rule which is something i came across from matt devella a youtuber a minimalist dude filmmaker good guy so he talks about the two-day rule which is if you're doing a habit or if you've started to do some sort of a habit follow the two-day rule meaning don't skip two days in a row so if you started a habit today and you missed it tomorrow don't miss day after tomorrow because that would make it two days just focus on you know getting that day right getting that habit done that day so don't miss two days in a row and that will sort of help you sort of build some sort of a habit on a consistent basis you know that that you do on a consistent basis so follow the two-day rule keep drawing keep making stuff keep scribbling and here's here's another kicker right so here's the cool part which is you can do more crappy drawings because you're not posting it online this will sort of allow you to sort of make more crappy drawings that you feel you know that is not worthy of posting online but the ones that is going to actually sort of really help you improve your art because you know you're allowing yourself to fail and make new things right so that is one so keep it going keep it going that's what i would say that so that is number one number two would be try the exact opposite of 100 days of sketching so this is what i'm going to do uh, I, I totally forgot i want to do this i was because i was sort of busy with the the drawing camp launch and uh, the uh, uh, 100 days of sketching getting over and all that uh, this is something you can do you can do this thing called slow vember meaning there is this artist called lee white you know uh, uh, he he's an artist and uh, you can probably go check out his instagram called lee white illo that is his instagram and he has this thing called slow vember so slow vember is usually during november but you can do this right now you can do this actually anytime you want to you just pick a month right you just pick a month and you just work on one piece just one piece right 
just work on it little by little every single day for that month you don't have to finish something every day you just need to work on one single illustration piece or some sort of a drawing that you want to do every day and you go slow you don't rush things you don't you don't have to post every day you just work on it little by little i think i i love that idea i i think i really want to try it i think i want to start something like that right slow vember type deal right just work on it something little by little and also another lesson which i've sort of learned right from this 100 days sketching challenge that is in sort of speaking of slowness is me rushing things is, is seems to sort of never help weirdly <laughs> rushing never helps at least sometimes it helps sometimes you need it i'm not saying you don't need it you never need it there are always you know contexts which you sort of need to apply these advices in but for me i've realized that me rushing to get things done isn't helping me a lot and so actually sort of being very detrimental rather if i just don't rush things and be patient with my progress i think i would actually achieve more by doing less right so that is sort of the idea uh uh don't rush it during slow vember or whenever you're doing this challenge and just work on one little piece and see where it takes you just at your own pace at your own time you know one cool illustration piece you thumbnail it you you research on it you take your time you know you have a deadline which is just 30 days but you take your time and you just patiently approach the process of doing that piece right so that is the thing that is that is two number two number three would be sort of on line of number two which is what you can do is try some sort of a project right so i'm being a big proponent of the idea of doing projects doing projects is probably one of the biggest thing that you can do to improve your craft and art i've been sort of learning about it you know i've sort of heard this concept in the past but i've never sort of fully understood the depth of it and that is this which is projects will help you improve your art in a systematic way in a contained way because projects are self contained they are in a container meaning a project has a start and project has a finish and if you do a project you're going to really improve and every single project that you do you can improve from one project to the next to the next to the next so do a lot of projects i have decided sort of made my entire a uh, next couple of months is to do a series of projects that i will be working on right everything that i do i do on a project basis i think on a project basis nothing is sort of all the time except for a few things that i do here and there but everything else is sort of like projects oh keshav that's this project that project this project that project you get that this that thing that blah blah done and you get it done right so that's how it's sort of working out for me and uh, here are some couple of projects that i will be doing and that you can do right so one is to make a five page comic so i've always had this idea of making a good five page comic i'll be doing that as part of a series which is also a project for me on youtube I have the, i'm uh, i'm going to be putting the, out the series called made in 7 days so made in 7 days is a series there's going to be sort of me making something in just 7 days from start to finish something challenging like a comic book like a children's book like a wall mural that is so big that you you're, you're wondering like man how do you do that in 7 days right something like that i want to make something that's good in 7 days some sort of a mini project so why am i doing this mini project because i feel like if i ever want to do big projects like right me making a big comic book or me making something that would take like a year for me to work on i would need to train myself to do mini mini projects before i try to aim to do say bigger projects right so Uh, some of you might know that i've tried this challenge called 100 days of making comics before and i failed miserably in that challenge right and it was a public humili- humiliation 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 it was uh, it was humiliating because i made this entire series about me making that comic and i stopped and i quit because it was too big for me to tackle right the story the story and the idea it took upon was too big for me to tackle so i had to stop i had to sort of put a stop to that 
So from then on, I realized that if I ever want to do big things, man, I should probably note all these things down. These are say good lessons. If I ever want to do big things, I need to sort of do things on a smaller scale, right? Something that is more digestible for me and practice doing those things. And over the coming years, I'll probably get better at doing things that are say on a very long-term basis. Drawing camp is another one, right? Drawing camp itself is like a monthly pro project. It's like us making a monthly movie every single month, right? Because the content is like three hours or something like that. And everything is so well produced and so well shot and everything is scripted and everything is properly drawn together. It's just so well made. And it's like, it's like making a mini project every single month, like a mini movie every single month. So that is, pro I think I'm excited for that end of 14 months because after the 14 months, I think I'll be really good at executing something this big. So see, these are all the things that is going to train me to do bigger things, right? So this is why I'm doing these things. So five page comic is something that you can do. Next one is a series of illustrations. So a series of illustration is, for example, the one I did, which is called the People Folk Illustration Project or the Faces Project, which I did for last year's Inktober, right? These are all, say, series of illustrations that has a common theme to them that you can do. For example, you can do, say, a series on ancient mythology or a series on different kinds of music genres, right? You illustrate every single different kinds of music genre that is out there and you give an illustration to sort of represent that music genre, like pop, like rock, like hip hop, like uh, country, right? Funk, you know, jazz and all that thing, right? So you, you, you sort of can illustrate something for every single one of those music genres. So that is a series of illustration. That is something that you can do. Uh, another project you can take up is sort of like a mini world building project. Give yourself a, an assignment to sort of build a world, explore its characters, its environments, and talk a little bit about that world and put it all in five pages. So it's like a world building project. You are sort of explaining. Say so you take this character and you show the different angles of that character. What are the characteristics of that character? You show a couple of drawings where you show the expressions of that character. Who are the character's friends? Where does the character live? And what does he do? What are the props does he have? What is, how does the world he live in look like? Or he or she lives in look like, right? So that's an example of a world building project that you can do. It can be say five pages long or 10 pages long. And that's gonna be like a mini thing that you can actually do, right? So. A world building project that is one so the next one is make a sticker pack right make some sort of like a sticker pack right i've always want to been making a sticker pack i have so many drawings that i can just turn it into a sticker i don't know i don't have the time to sort of put all those things together and make it into a sticker so make a sheet full of stickers that you sort of want to use yourself right that is something cool i've, I've seen people do that i myself want to do that uh, you can do that that's a that's a cool project right there mini project next one would be to make or illustrate a movie poster, a movie of your choice. Illustrate some of your favorite movies or make a cover for your favorite music album or favorite music single, right? Some sort of thing. You just make a cover, a cover illustration, like a vinyl cover that is square, right? So you can make something like that. So these are all say little illustration projects that will sort of give you a focus. And the more projects you do, the better you're going to get at it, right? And the better you're going to get at finishing projects, the better you're going to get at your, at your craft, the better you're going to get at sort of going through the process of actually doing projects because I think that is really, really important. Most people quit projects, quit things because they're not able to bear what the process involves, the emotions that it involves. You know, they cannot go through that ups and downs. It's sort of too daunting for them. Doing things on a tiny basis that is chewable for you you know it's something you can chew you know it's not too much or too little it's something that you it's it's slightly out, outside your comfort zone but not too much these are the things that you can do of course all these things take a lot of patience which is very very important or else you'll probably sort of quit <laughs> again so yeah so that is the third thing that i want to sort of talk about and these are all say sort of projects that i'll be doing myself you know, I think I'll be doing a comic book 
a mini uh, children's book and i want to sort of paint a wall mural and i want to make a big canvas illustration piece and i want to what else what else do i want to do i have this thing called i have a doodle project which, uh, yeah that's going to be interesting I'll, i'll you know when the video comes out probably in five like five months you'll know i want to make an animated short a little animated short like not too big something i can do in seven days because i think that's my attention span right there <laughs> more than that it's going to be too hard for me to sort of grasp around so yeah So these are the projects that you can do. Last but not least is this my fellow people which is put yourself through a learning plan meaning you want to improve your craft right you want to get better at drawing better at making things why don't you sort of find a program find something find some courses online it doesn't have to be me i'm not trying to plug my own course which is drawing cam by the way links are by down below in the description you don't have to buy it you don't really you don't you don't have to buy my stuff even though the first one is actually for free you don't have to buy it. you can go through it if you like to but you can actually put yourself through a learning program a learning plan that will sort of help you to level up so some of the things that i've been working on right so every single month of drawing camp is focused on a particular chapter and this month or i mean the next month is gesture and i've been actually focusing on gesture that is that is what i've been sort of doing i've been doing a lot of gestural drawings gestural works i'm trying to get my gestural drawings better i'm working on that particular craft of making gestural drawings dynamic drawings is what i call them and since i'm also working on the course for that thing this is sort of sort of you know coinciding with that and every single month i have some so, some sort of a learning plan that i actually go through which is sort of helping me level up in my art because teaching is a fantastic way to sort of learn you know because you're doing something and while you're doing it you ask yourself so many questions that will sort of help you articulate the process of you doing things that's why you know very few people are good artists and good teachers because most people are good artists are ex- and extremely bad teachers because they cannot articulate what they are doing and this process of me going through this thing is sort of helping me articulate what i'm do- uh, doing so yeah put yourself a learning plan you know there are tons of these courses online you know you know where to find them you know all these websites that are out there you just find something and just give yourself like hey you know what i'm i'm going to work work on this particular part of my craft you know i would highly recommend that you go through some sort of a paid program right me again totally i'm i'm not even kidding you don't have to buy my thing right but the reason why i'm saying is because i've found a lot of these youtube tutorials and free thingies and cheap courses cheap 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 courses i i i i buy them and i don't do them because you know one it's cheap and i don't have some sort of accountability and the problem another problem is those courses don't have a structured way of me going through it so i would highly recommend you go through some sort of find a teacher you know it doesn't have to be online right find some sort of a teacher you know someone who you can learn from and uh, you know on a personal basis don't be like oh i follow that youtuber and i'm going to learn from that youtuber that that might work that that will work right but it's going to take you a long time to sort of you know uh, get through it i would highly recommend you just find someone find something find some sort of a program which you saw if 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 you go through that program it's going to level up your art and that is something that you can sort of do right so yeah that is the that is the fourth thing the fourth thing and so those are the four things right that you can do during or i mean not during after 100 days of sketching this challenge because you've built up a habit you've built up something consistent now you can actually keep it up and keep going and actually do something with it right so that's it that's pretty much it for this podcast people ha it was fun it's a very nice short and a quick podcast i like it my throat is sort of screaming right now that's funny throat is supposed to scream but i've been talking non stop for the past 40 minutes it is screaming actually a little bit and uh, anyways yeah i think i need to drink some water because i, I haven't t- sort of talked in a podcast right like this for a, a, like a while right now i'm, I'm i think i'm get, i'm losing touch i'm losing touch but i'll keep get, i'll get i'll get better at it right so yeah guys at the end of the day here's here's what that matters consistency and not just consistency right at the start of the podcast i said 
I'll share something that's going to go in complete contradiction with what I was saying, right? The dart thrower, meaning you throw as many darts as you want on the dartboard, you will, you know, you, chances of, uh, you know, some of the darts sticking on the dartboard is highly likely. So that is good. That there should be points in your life you sort of do that. But also, I feel lately, right, deliberate throwing is also important, meaning intentional throwing. You just don't throw like blah, 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 like that, right? You just don't randomly throw things. You take something, you, you set an intention, and you throw it with intention and deliberateness. Because I found that more work is good, but just doing more mindless work isn't going to help you get better at drawing meaning if you're just drawing 100 drawings just like just to, to get through the sake of doing 100 drawings i don't think that's going to help you need to be deliberate with everything that you do so that every single time you do something you're intentional and you're deliberate about it and you do that thing to sort of so that you can actually make some sort of progress which is which is the most important thing. You need to progress from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. Little by little. It doesn't have to be big, but little by little. So that's what I've been thinking about. And just because I talk about this doesn't mean I'm good at this. And uh, uh, But this is what I've been thinking about. So yeah, it might make me sound like this wise person who's young and wise. How, 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 how awesome is that? Well, well uh, I'm just like anybody, right? But... Because, 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 because people get this false assumption of just who people are on the internet. And, and, and let me tell you something. Who you think I am is not who I, who I am. And who you think most people you are following on the internet are, they're not that person. They're more than that or less than that. You'll never know unless you get to know them personally. So yeah, that is one deep way to end the podcast. Hope you all have some marshmallows. I don't know why marshmallows. I don't know why. Just just have some marshmallows, right? If you don't have access to marshmallows like I do, because I live in India, you don't just come across marshmallows that easily. Go buy macarons. <laughs> macarons are tasty. I haven't had a macaron in a long time. Thanks to COVID. Screw that thing. I think that's how we're going to uh, end this podcast. Go Corona, go. <laughs> Anyways, thank you. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. And keep smiling. Keep smiling.